Digital assistants are the newest thing in smart home technology. Google was first out of the gate here in Canada with its home device, and you can check out my review of Google Home here on the YouTube channel. But now Amazon's Echo is finally available in Canada. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and I recently had a chance to try the Echo and the smaller Dot device in my home for a couple of weeks of testing a review. Echo and Dot are essentially intelligent, cloud-based personal digital assistants cloud-based robot butlers, if you want to look at it that way. They can do all kinds of tasks for you, from making appointments, adding things to your grocery list, answering trivia questions, doing recipe conversions, getting you news, weather, and traffic information, and of course, playing music or streaming music from services like Spotify. I had a chance to try both of these devices out in my home for a few weeks, and here's what I found. At its core, Echo is a speaker, a 360-degree omnidirectional speaker, so you get audio from every direction no matter where you place it. Amazon Echo Dot is a smaller version of the Echo. It provides all the same functions as Echo, but with a much smaller footprint and a much smaller speaker. Both the Amazon Echo and the smaller Dot device respond to the name of the personal digital assistant that you have, and that's Alexa. Once you've summoned her, you can ask for just about anything you want. Alexa, what's the current temperature in Calgary today? Right now in Calgary, Alberta, it's minus 24 degrees with flurries. The built-in microphone, seven microphones actually, and you can see them here, is always listening and waiting for you to respond and call on it. It uses the speaker to respond to you. Alexa can even hear you and respond while music is playing. So what's the difference between Echo and Dot? In a word, size. Echo is more a full-size speaker, while Dot is about a quarter the size. For the most part, they can execute all the same tasks, so your choice will come down to how much room you have and how much speaker power you want. Getting the Amazon Echo and the Dot set up is pretty easy. Essentially, it's the same for either one. You'll plug it into AC Power and then download and go to the Alexa app on your smartphone, and it works on both Android or Apple iPhones. Once you follow the instructions, you're gonna be set up and ready to go in minutes. And if you want more specific how-to instructions, head over to the blog at techgadgetscanada.com and I've got them there for you. I have several smart home devices I wanted to get set up. I wouldn't say the process was intuitive, but it was easy once I knew what to do. It also appears to be a bit different the first time you do it compared to when you add devices later on. To get started, select Smart Home from the hamburger menu in the top left corner. You can ask Alexa to discover smart home devices here in the app, but if this is the first time you're getting this set up, she likely won't find any. At this point, click Get Help Connecting and then Enable Smart Home Skills. That page will take you to a list of Echo compatible apps and devices. Select your current smart home device from the list and you'll need to sign in to each device's account to get them linked. Once they're linked, you'd think they'd work and you'd be able to see them in your app to control them. Not yet. There's one more step. You'll need to ask Alexa to discover devices again. She'll do a scan of your room and then automatically add the lights you already have set up and installed into the app. At this point, you can go into the group function and group your lights together so you can control them by room name. I found the Echo device controlled my smart home lights very easily, even seconds after setup. Alexa, turn the office lights mm. off. And you'll see that she's pretty quick okay. and responsive. Alexa, turn the office mm. lights back on. Okay. Now, adding a single new light bulb was a lot easier with the Echo than it was with something like the Google Home. With Google Home, I had to disconnect an entire lighting lineup, all the bulbs that I already had set up, in order to add one new bulb back in. Now, with the Echo, I didn't have to do that. I just went into the app, and you can add single devices. It was quick, easy, and really hassle-free. A neat feature of the Echo devices is the ability to use them as in-home intercoms between rooms. You can speak from your phone to an Echo device or from Echo to Echo. Here's how to do it. Open the Alexa app on Android or iOS and tap the conversations icon, which is that text bubble in the middle at the bottom. Follow the on-screen prompts. Once you complete initial setup, you should be able to drop in, which is Amazon's term for device-to-device -device calling, from one to the other. Now, using this feature isn't exactly intuitive. To make a call from your phone, tap the conversations bubble again, then tap the blue bar at the top of the screen that says drop in. Here, you'll be able to select which device you want to drop in on specifically from your phone. Of course, you can also just ask Alexa to drop in on another device.
I found that I needed to use very specific wording and verbiage when I was trying to connect between my Echo devices. Initially, I had the dot named Roger's office for its location in my husband's office. But whenever I'd ask it to call down to the office device or to Roger's office device, it seemed like it was looking for a contact in my address book and it wasn't finding it, so the call wasn't going through. When I renamed it the office, everything seemed to work fine. Now, the other thing I noticed is you need to use very specific language and very specific words when you're trying to get these devices to talk to each other. Now, bear with me through this little demonstration. Alexa, drop into the office. And this one's the office. I couldn't find a contact matching office. To see your contacts, go to the Alexa app. So she's confused. But when I change the language to Alexa, drop in the mm -hmm. office. You'll see the call connects. You can add all kinds of skills to your Echo devices. And skills are basically like voice controlled apps, I guess, for your Echo lineup. Now, you can add all kinds of things like controlling your Nest thermostat to playing white noise and even checking on flight statuses. All you'll need to do is go to the skills section of the free Amazon Alexa app and surf through the skills that are available. A feature I really appreciated with the Echo devices is the ability to use different calendars no matter what smartphone platform I'm using. So I've got the Apple iPhone and even though I do, and this is not necessarily an Apple device, I can still link my calendar to the Echo. Alexa, add a calendar appointment tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. titled Get Groceries. That's Get Groceries on Saturday, December 30th at 11 a.m., right? Right. And as okay. you can see, I've added that. she's already added that appointment to my calendar. So whether I want to check things that are coming up in my day or my week or have Alexa add appointments mm -hmm. for me, it's all very easily done, even cross-platform. If you want to do this, go to the hamburger menu in the Alexa app and then go to settings. Scroll down to calendar, then choose your preferred calendar and that's it. You can ask your personal digital assistant to order things for you from Amazon, which is a really convenient feature. Now you will need to make sure that one click ordering is turned on. You can also set up a four digit pin code so that the kids can't order all the toys they want. Otherwise, it's as simple as asking. Alexa, buy me some parchment paper from amazon.ca. Did you want me to find parchment paper? Yes. And you'll see what she's going to do the here. The top search result for parchment paper is Beyond Gourmet Unbleached Parchment Paper, 71 square foot roll. It's $10.50 total, including tax. Would you like to buy it? No. Alexa, cancel. So she'll go through and give you a bunch of different options and you can hear sort of what the prices are and what the parameters are. The only thing that I noticed is that she doesn't tell you whether what you've ordered is a Prime opportunity or not. I have Amazon Prime set up and I generally will try to order things uh, on Prime so that the shipping is included for me. That's one of the things that doesn't come across with this, but otherwise if you just need to order some basics, it's super convenient. Overall, I think Echo is a good device. Once it starts to learn your voice and your requests, it does indeed respond better. I will say Alexa has a bit of a cold and robotic voice compared to something like Google's Assistant and Siri, but maybe she'll adapt. Overall, I really feel like there is more that you can do with the Amazon Echo devices compared to something like Google Home. For starters, you can use both of these as an intercom in your house, which I think is really convenient and will probably be helpful for people in bigger houses. I like the fact that you can add different calendars as well. You're not just limited to Google Calendar or Android calendars. You can also add Microsoft or Apple, which is really convenient. When you throw in the fact you can also order things from Amazon.com just by asking or Amazon.ca, that's another really standout feature for me. There's also the issue of price. Right now, the larger Amazon Echo device sells for about $99 Canadian. That's compared to the full-size Google Home device, which sells for $179. So when you pack in the fact that there's a lot more you can do with the Echo device and the price is lower, I'm going to have to say Amazon Echo comes out on top for me. If you want to read more, there's a full blog online at techgadgetscanada.com. Head over there and check it out. And if you liked this video and found it helpful, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing since it helps me keep making more videos that I hope you all can watch and enjoy. I'm Erin. Thanks again for being here. Catch me on Twitter or Instagram. Until the next time, I'm at Erin L Y Y C.